The World on Fire, Chapter 3 During the Welsh Revival, people came to the meetings for God, not for a superstar. They crowded chapels to overflowing, not even knowing whether an evangelist would be there or not. Sometimes Evan Roberts would enter a meeting, sit on the front seat, and say nothing for three hours. Then he would stand up, preach, and pray for some 10 or 15 minutes and sit down. Sometimes he might preach the whole time or pray the whole time. Sometimes he would sit silently through the entire meeting. Regardless of what Evan did, the people would carry on under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There were soloists, there were duos, and special singers during the revival, but they seldom announced where they were going to sing. Sometimes they went to a place expecting to sing, but the Spirit had other plans, and they would keep their peace, or they might just pray. Those who witnessed their ministry only had the witness that when they did sing, it was the Holy Spirit. This was a revival in which the Lord Jesus Christ Himself was the center and the main attraction. It was noised abroad that He was in the house. The young workers knew that the Holy Spirit came to testify of Jesus, and if an evangelist or the evangelistic party became the center of the attraction, then the Holy Spirit would depart. Evan Roberts knew that he was popular, and he dreaded publicity because he felt that it detracted from the one who was the true source of the revival. He dreaded newspaper reporters. He dreaded adulation. Many times he withdrew himself from the meetings when he felt that the people were coming to see and hear him instead of coming for the Lord. In meetings where he felt that he was the center of attraction, he pleaded with an agonized spirit that the people would look away to Christ and Him alone, or else the Holy Spirit would withdraw Himself from them. Though Evan Roberts became the most publicized preacher in the world at that time, he repeatedly refused interviews with reporters who came from every part of the globe. He refused to be photographed except by members of his own family. He knew this awakening was of God and not from himself, and that if people idolized him, the glory would be withdrawn. He did not even answer the multitude of requests that came from publishing houses around the world seeking to write his biography. He greatly feared that by doing this, he might rob the Lord of some of the glory that was due only to him. To speak or not to speak. Being led by the Spirit requires knowing when not to speak as much as when to speak. Evan Roberts was a wonderful demonstration of this sensitivity to the Lord. As stated, Sometimes during a meeting, he would sit among the people without saying a word. Visitors from different parts of the world were astonished as they observed him letting the course of crowded gatherings be dictated entirely by the people's sensitivity to the Spirit as they sang or prayed or testified. F. B. Meyer, a mature and renowned Christian leader, upon watching him in the meetings, explained, He will not go in front of the Divine Spirit, but is willing to stand aside and remain in the background unless he is perfectly sure that the Spirit of God is moving him. Then he added, It is a profound lesson for us all. The one who knows when not to speak will speak with more authority when he does speak. Christian leaders who came from the ends of the earth stood in awe and bowed in adoration to God as they witnessed the revival. General William Booth, Rodney Smith, 
F. B. Meyer, G. Campbell Morgan, and many other renowned men of God came to marvel at this great visitation. In most cases, they only prayed or said a few words. Sometimes they sat quietly in the meetings while young people and even children prayed, sang, and testified in the Spirit. The men of God who came all quickly recognized that this was not a revival that came through great preachers or great preaching. This was a supernatural work altogether apart from either. To their credit, most of these men quickly understood that their very personalities would actually hinder the meetings and they yielded to the Holy Spirit. Great preaching is loved by all who love the Word of God, but these great preachers all knew that their great preaching had never produced the kind of presence of the Lord they encountered in Wales. The Children Enter the Kingdom Since the 1990s, there has been a great movement to equip and train the children and youth in the ways of the Lord and to help them become fruitful members of the body of Christ. This movement is of the Lord and it is significant, but the Welsh revival was quite different. In Wales, it was the children and youth who sought to equip their parents and train the adults in the ways of the Lord. The Lord said that we had to become like little children to enter the kingdom. They may have more to teach us than we have to teach them. Evan Roberts was only 26 years of age when the revival broke out. His sister Mary, who was such an important part of the work, was 16. Their brother Dan and Mary's future husband, Sidney Evans, were both about 20. The singing sisters, who were greatly used, were between the ages of 18 and 22. Thousands of young people were converted and immediately sent throughout the land, testifying to the glory of God. Little children had their own prayer meetings and witnessed boldly to even the most hardened of sinners. The chapels overflowed with the young. A new song spontaneous worship that gives birth to a new form of worship is usually found in true revivals. This was also true of the Welsh revival. This too probably could not have happened had there been just one strong worship leader in the meetings. There were worship leaders present, but they yielded, understanding that this revival was not for the purpose of birthing new superstars, but to glorify Jesus. This allowed the Holy Spirit to give birth to new songs and to a new form of worship that had not been previously known. Much of the contemporary style of worship that is now attributed to either the Pentecostal or Charismatic movements actually had its origin in Wales. This revival was exploding in Wales at the same time as the Pentecostal outpouring was beginning on Azusa Street in Los Angeles. The leaders of these two revivals, Seymour and Bartleman in Los Angeles and Roberts in Wales, they wrote to each other during the revivals. There was also a great deal of other interchange between the revivals as people hungry for God rushed from one to the other seeking His presence. Naturally, they impacted one another. One of the great contributions of the Welsh revival was the new spontaneous form of worship called singing in the Spirit that was to become a signature of the Holy Spirit's presence for decades to come. R. B. Jones, a leader in the revival, said the following concerning the music. The fact is, unless heard, it is unimaginable, and when heard, indescribable. There was no hymn book. No one gave out a hymn. Just anyone would start the singing, and very rarely did it happen that the hymn started was out of harmony with the mood at the moment. Once started, 
as if moved by a simultaneous impulse, the hymn was caught up by the whole congregation, almost as if what was about to be sung had been announced and all were responding to the baton of a visible human leader. I have seen nothing like it. You felt that the thousand or fifteen hundred persons before you had become merged into one myriad-headed but simple-souled personality. Such was the perfect blending of the mood and purpose that it bore eloquent testimony to a unity created only by the Spirit of God. Another witness testified, The praying and singing were both wonderful. There was no need for an organ or a piano. The assembly was its own organ, as a thousand sorrowing or rejoicing hearts found expression in the psalmody of their native hills.